In Iran, homosexuality is illegal. Cross-dressing is a no-no too. Islamic tradition stating that a man must only dress in male clothes. But, rather surprisingly, among Iranian religious scholars, there's an open, accepting attitude towards transsexuality and those who undergo sex change operations. This proves to be the starting point for Plastic, a piece of theatre written and directed by Mayor Dad Safe for the Anglo-Iranian company 30 Bird Productions. Here's a short sample of what you can expect, and a word of warning for obvious reasons we didn't test this recipe in advance in the ticket kitchen. Now to make the perfect pickle, you must follow these guidelines. To avoid bruising, don't pack the produce too tightly into the jars. Pack to within two and a half centimetres from the top of the jar, leaving room for the contents to be completely covered in vinegar. Always use sterilised jars and vinegar-proof lids. Use cold vinegar for a crisp pickle and hot vinegar for softer textures required. These onions will last up to two years plus in ideal conditions, a cool, dark pantry or storeroom. Ladies, I'm going to have my sexual organ removed. Ali Amadi, who is performing in the production Plastic at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in Scotland. Well, Mayor Dad Safe came in to see us at the BBC to tell us more. So where did the idea for Plastic actually come from? I'd noticed, you know, that in Iran after the revolution, you know, during the Islamic Republic, actually personal expression of uh, ambitions and personal desires had increased. And I think that's mainly because the Islamic law that came to power was supported by the majority of the people. And of course, then people begin to negotiate with it and in order to still be able to do the stuff that they want to do, but without it being illegal. And within that, then there was the sex change craze that started in Iran and the fact that it was completely supported by the government, the Islamic government. Supported by the government? In what way? I think it was in the early 80s that uh, Ayatollah Khomeini gave a fatwa legalising the sex change. Um, if, if a man wants to become a woman or a woman wants to become a man, it's absolutely fine according to Islamic law. And so that created an interesting situation because suddenly, a few years later, all these men were, or, and some women as well, um, expressing their, their desire to have sex change. And from what I've gathered is that most of them tend to come from quite traditional families as well. So suddenly their parents are very traditional and in their eyes this is, you know, an awful thing to happen. Have to deal with this, given that their own leader, you know, moral leader, has also approved it. So it just creates this really interesting, complex situation, again, going back to law and desire. Those are the concepts that sort of, the initial concepts that really informed the creation of plastic. Because a lot of people will find that surprising, that, that not only does the state and the religious scholars approve of sex change, but also the fact that Iran is said to be the plastic surgery capital of the world. I mean... Yeah, I think Iran is the rhinoplasty capital of the world, whereas I think America what is... What do you mean by rhinoplasty? Nose job. Ah, right. And okay. uh, America is the fat removal capital of the world. I'm not making this up. Why but, noses for Iran, then? What, 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 what makes that so popular? <laughs> Well, you know, the strong Middle Eastern nose is, is famous. I'm actually quite fond of it, to be quite honest. You know, I like. Well, as you say, it's not just noses. Part of the show involves uh, what at times feels like a Greek chorus of people asking over and over again, are you happy to have your sexual organs <laughs> removed? And that, they answer with questions of their own. Will it hurt? Will people be able to tell? What will it look like? Yes. This is all uncomfortable stuff, isn't it? It's quite, quite harrowing. Are, are you trying to make people feel uncomfortable? I don't know whether I'm trying to or not, but I think... It is uncomfortable anyway. I think the plastic, you know, it's been described as dark comedy. The main doctor who's made his name doing these operations, he was talking about this. When you ask someone whether they want to have their sexual organ removed, if they come up with a resounding yes, or yes, I've always wanted to do this, then they are the perfect candidate. If, however, they hesitate, then, you know, we are not sure if they're the right candidate to, to have an operation. So that's why this came into the piece, because obviously it seemed to be quite an important question to ask. How do audiences yeah. react, though? You, you've been uh, on stage at Edinburgh for a few weeks now. You, you, you separate the audience, I gather. When, when they come in, they're, they're segregated into to men and women. They're led through catacombs by women clad in white who look like sort of surgical technicians. And then you see, get a series of vignettes, a man and woman having their chest bandage and at one stage stiletto heels pickled in jars <laughs> I'd, I'd come out shaking i'd be terrified <laughs> i don't think they've come up shaking i think they've come up sometimes 
just uh, very surprised. And they hover around the space sometimes when they come out. It's almost as if they've some, sometimes they want to go back in and just make sure they've seen what they've seen. They come out stunned. Yes, the aim with the piece was not to tell a story, to create a social analysis of what's going on in Iran. It wasn't a journalistic piece. The aim was to see how can we explore the, this relationship between being a man and being a woman without going into any cliches whatsoever, which is not an easy thing to do. <laughs> We leave the interpretation of it to them, to them rather than tell them what, what it's about. A rather enigmatic Merdad Safe talking there about his show Plastic, which is being performed until the end of this weekend at the Pleasance Underground in Edinburgh in Scotland.